Wow, praise the Lord. My name is Henry Kiremi Ikingi. We want to thank God because of this beautiful day that the Lord has made, that we may meet and fellowship with you today in the name of the Lord. We are Gospel Celebration Church, and we want to thank God because of this great opportunity. Our YouTube channel, Gospel Celebration Church, we are glad that you have tuned in this evening. I want to encourage you to uh, click on the bell so that you will be notified every time we come live. We want to thank God because of uh, our Father Apostle Patrick Murethi for allowing us to have such a, a good uh, time to fellowship with the teens. And therefore, we want to say thank you. The Lord bless you. We are encouraging you to stay connected from now to the end of this great sermon. We have been going through a very powerful series on serving the Lord while you are young. And I want to thank God that you have always uh, committed yourself to stay tuned with us, to hear what the Lord has for us. And in this fellowship of uh, the teens, we are saying the Lord will continue to minister to you and even to uh, teach you more about service. We started and we defined what is service and we committed ourselves to serve the Lord in season and out of season. And I, want to, I don't want to get deep to, on what we have handled in the past. I will continue from where we left when we were sharing on why should we serve. And I want to take us to another area, the benefit of service. I want to remind you that service is what makes people to see God in us. When we serve, people are able to see God in us. And therefore, one of the ways that people can see God in our lives is when we serve, when we commit ourselves to doing the work of God, when we commit ourselves to create an impact in the life of others. When we serve, uh, people are able to see that we do not love ourselves than others. When we serve, we, we are making people to understand that there is another way you can be a blessing other than just loving yourself and doing things for yourself. Now, what are the benefits of service? What are the benefits of service? Why should we continue serving? I know we talked of a job and we say that he was surrounded, that even when the devil was planning attacks against Job, he could not prevail because our job was guarded. Another point on the benefit of service is that our needs are met in the course of service. When we serve God in our, in our life of service, our needs are met. Some loopholes are closed in the course of our service. Paul was talking to Timothy in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 6, and he said that the hand-working farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. That hand-working farmer should be the first to receive, to receive a share of his, of his crops. Every time when we work, there is a great harvest. And therefore, in this, in this course, in this assignment, in this service, when we do it, there is a harvest. And therefore, when we get now to the time of harvesting, the very person who should have a great share, or the first share, is the person we serve. Is the person who has, a, has worked hard. And therefore, I encourage you to work hard there is a great reward. When you will be harvesting, the Lord will make sure that you are the very first person to receive a share of, of the harvest. Matthew chapter 10, Matthew chapter 10, verse 10. Jesus sends the 12 disciples and he tells them, do not carry anything when you go out, don't carry your food stuff. Don't carry clothes. Don't carry a beggar's bag. Let me just read so that all of us uh, can get this. 
from verse number 9, do not get any gold or silver or copper or take with you in your belt. No bag for the journey or extra shirt or sandals or a staff for the worker is worthy of his keep. When we work for God, God makes sure that we have our package. A worker is worthy of his keep. Let me go back to verse number 8. A heal those who are ill, raise the dead, cleanse who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. This brings uh, an understanding that we do not serve for our pay. When you serve, let it be out of your mind that you're doing it for our pay. We have been given, given gifts freely, and therefore we are supposed to give out freely. When we serve, don't do, don't do it for our pay. Don't do anything expecting a return. Don't serve saying that I'm doing it so that I can be rewarded. Or maybe people can come to your aid when you have a need. They may not even come when you have a need. But you are doing it for God. And the Bible says, when Jesus was sending his disciples, do not go equipped to, to receive a pay. But remember what Paul told Timothy, that a first hand, a hand working farmer will be the very first person to receive his pay. And therefore Jesus says in number 10 that for the worker is worthy of his keep. When you go out to serve, when you serve, the Lord will make sure that you have your package in full. Not from people. Yes, God will use people so that you can be rewarded. But never expect it from people. God will make sure that you receive your package. You will get your package day in, day out. Number two, our visions become clearer as we serve. When we serve, our visions become clear day after day. We are able to see where we are going. At times we may be asking God, how is my gift? Where is my future? How is my future? You have so many questions about yourself. But when you start doing things for God, when you start serving people, you are able to realize, ah, this is what I'm gifted in. This is what I ought to do. This is what I ought to do, to do for my life to, to turn around. And therefore, our visions become clear. When we serve God, we, uh, we grow day after day. We become confident in our area of service. We start shining in our giftings. That's why Paul was telling Timothy, fan into flame the gifting of God in your life. So when we serve, we grow spiritually. You can only grow when we continue serving. But if you keep quiet, if you sit down and wait for things to flow, you will be dormant. So one thing that will shine in our lives when we serve is that we are going to, to grow. Day after day, we are going to grow. Number three, number four, it helps us in getting shaped in the image and likeness of God. When we serve, we are, we are shaped. At times there is a way you feel that there is how things ought to be done. When we serve, we realize another way. God shapes our image. There are those of us that grew in an environment that is very harsh. To me, kuwa kwa hali, you being harassed, left, right, center. And therefore, you have built bitterness in your life. But when you serve, the Lord is able to open your, your eyes to see areas that you are very weak, areas that you have a lot of bitterness. And therefore, you, you are able to get rid of that, of the bitterness, and you grow you shaped to the image of God. We have grown, or maybe someone has grown in an environment that is not conducive for spirituality, that you are not able to understand, um, to connect your, yourself with people, 
with God. You're not able to understand how to relate. But when you start serving, the Lord shapes you. You realize that this is not how I should behave. You start changing. Ulikuna kasirika ovyovyo unabadilika. You're able to realize your weak areas and therefore you are shaped to the image and likeness of God. Another point is that it helps, it helps us develop our character. This is like one the same thing. You are shaped to the image of God. You develop your character. You are that person. I don't want to talk about uh, your character or maybe my character when I was not in this. But when I've started serving, when I've gotten deep in service, I've realized that my character needs to be shaped. And therefore, in this, you're able to develop your character to make yourself and become a good servant. So I encourage you to uh, treasure serving, get deep in service, and you find yourself, your character is being made to become a great servant. Another point is that service helps us to grow in unity with others in the ministry. There are people, uh, there are people that are that maybe because of where or how they were nurtured, how they grew, they are not able to connect with others. But when you serve, you are able to relate. You are able to connect with others. You are able to work in unity. Umelelewa, you have grown knowing that it is me and me. When you when you start serving, you are able to understand that I need to work with others so that I become an, an a better person, so that I produce good things, so that I be, uh, so that there are good results. But when you when you are alone, you knew that this is it is me and me. It's the, this is the only path that I can uh, that I can use. When you serve, you are able to to realize that my point is good. My way of doing things is good, but for, for, for the purpose of the team, it may not be uh, the, bet, the, best, the best way. And therefore, you are able to work with unity. You are able to work with people. You are able to, 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 become, to become a team player, not like me and me. Another point is that it develops and sustains the relationship between God and man and vice versa. When we serve, you are able to, to sustain your relationship. Watu, u, watu upotea kwa sababu ya kukawa menyamaza huko kwa viti. And therefore, as a teen, as you grow up, as a person who is listening to me uh, tonight, I encourage you to get into service. Your character is, mod is modeled in service. Your relationship is made perfect when you get deep in service. That's why you realize that I have been failing. This is not why, this is not how I should live as a servant of God. I need to live a good life so that people can see God in me. We say that when we are starting, that people see God in us when we serve. And therefore, we are saying that when you serve, you are able to realize your, your way is not straight. You live a crooked way, and therefore you're able to realize and get out of it. And the, your relationship is made. Your relationship is sustained. You're able to grow in good relationship with God. Another point is that it connects us with favor with God and us with men. When we serve, we are able to get favors. I told you last time that a person who is deep in service has his own package of favor. When you serve, you able you gain favor because you be touching the hearts of people. You be touching the heart of God. When you serve, you touch the heart of God. And therefore, if you touch the heart of God, God will be concerned about your life. You gain favor. You gain favor. God thinks about you. He will be saying, like when he, when he was talking, when he was talking to the heavenly hosts, 
He's saying, there is no man like Job. Why? Because of service, because of his commitment to God. And therefore, I charge you this evening, commit yourself to doing much for God. When you do it, you will have a package of favor. God will be concerned about you. He will show you favor. People will find, you find people loving you. Even those that hated you there before, they will start loving you. You find people loving you and you reason why? It is because you are, you are deep in service. Watu wanajaribu kukuchukia wanakuta hawezi. Because you have a package of favor from God. Yes, people hate people. People are people. They will continue hating you. But when you serve, wanajikuta tu wanakupenda. You start gaining favor day in, day out. My brother, my sister, treasure service. In school, you'll be favored because you served, because you touch the heart of someone. You will find uh, teachers favoring you, loving you. You gaining favor from your peers, gaining favor from people. Unakuta mtu tu amekuja like in your school. Anasema nimelipia fulani fees. Prophecies come. People are, are prophesying about you. Nikitoka hapa, I cannot afford to stay without praying for you. Because you have a package of favor. Treasure serving God. Treasure serving God. Another point is that it opens us up and brings out the hidden potential in us. There is so much potential in us. God has deposited gifts in our lives. But I've said this and I will say it again, that if we are seated and not doing anything, these gift, giftings will be of no use. But when we serve, God opens us up. He opens those giftings. The potential that is in us is made active. We are able to realize that there was so much in us, but we couldn't realize when we are seated. When we wake out and serve, we are able to realize, Allah, I am gifted in this, so I am gifted in singing. Ah, I am gifted in ushering. I am gifted in this area. I am gifted in media. I am gifted in, in vocals. I am gifted in dancing. Oh, ku, kumbe na a cheza piano like this. So there is so much, there was so much in me, but I could not, I, I did not realize. It's like what Jacob saw. He went and slept, placed a stone to be his pillow. When he was asleep, he saw angels coming from heaven and getting back to heaven. And, and in the morning he said, oh, I did not know that God was here. I am telling you that you will be surprised. When you get deep in service, you'll be surprised. Ah, so I had this gifting in me. So I can speak and people listen to me. Oh, I had this gifting of, of singing. I am talented in this. But it, this cannot happen if you just sit down and watch people do things. This cannot happen if you, if you, if you fear uh, getting out. If you fear studying before people, this cannot happen. It will happen when you get out boldly and exercise that gift that is in you. And, ex and do something. It will, you will realize it when you get out and do something from God. And some people, you realize, ah, I had these giftings. I had these giftings. I have heard of serious business people saying that I, I started helping someone. And from that, I realized that I have a gifting. The employer told me that you have this gifting. And they are doing great. They are doing great businesses. 
but it is started by helping. I charge you today, my brother, my sister, start somewhere. Start somewhere. Do something. Do something. Don't be seated. Don't wait for people to do things. Do it yourself. And you shine in every area of your life. Discovering your area of service. How do you discover your area of service? How do you discover? How do you know that I'm gifted? Or, or maybe I can do one, two, three. Number one, I will say, start doing it. Start doing it. Another way of discovering your area of service is through praying to God. When we pray, God is able to reveal to us our giftings or maybe an area that we can explore. An area that you can explore either through training, uh, through starting from somewhere. So be a prayerful person. If you can't pray, then it will be hard even for you to serve. So the, all, the, the best way to engage service is to start praying. Be a prayerful person. In prayer, we are able to, our eyes are opened. Our inner eyes are opened. And we are able to understand, if I take this path, I will shine. I should tell us that God brings us people to us that are full of knowledge and wisdom. That are gifted in many areas. These are gone feeling people that can lead you to a very good place. There is a gift that you have seen in your mentor. And you feel that, I, that because I, am, I feel God taking me to this direction, the only person who can make you better is a person that you emulate, is a person that you feel that is good in a certain area. You are, you, the Lord has revealed to you that you can do music, you can be a good singer, then get in touch or look for a mentor who is gifted in singing. Get connected to that person. When you get connected to such, uh, you, they are able to mold you. You are able to see areas that you need to improve. And therefore, through such, you will grow. Or you will discover more the area that you need to engage in service. Through friends and acquaintances or company, people that you're staying with, your peers, the people that, you're, that, that, that you work with, people that you school with, people that you stand with, those friends, at times they will tell you that you're very good in this area. Do not just have those ones in you who check in and marize your story. You need to think, why have they told you that? Maybe there is a, there is a gifting that they're seeing in you, but you're not able to identify it. Think about it. If they're saying that you're gifted in singing, if they're saying you're gifted in a drama, if they're saying you, uh, you're gifted in, uh, in, in preaching or the Lord has blessed you in a certain area, think about it. Get deep in, into understanding why am I told this. That some of these areas make sure that you're able to analyze and to analyze into what people are saying about you. They, they might be speaking the truth. They might be pointing out that which is in you, but you are not able to, to notice. Then through that, if you engage in that direction, and you, 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 you might find, find yourself that whatever you've been doing before wasn't in line with uh, what your gifting is. The other area is the last, uh, not the least, is using your skills and training. Where you have, uh, the area that you have been trained in, or maybe the skills that you have, may play a very vital role in your service, or in choosing your area of service. Therefore, it's good to look deep 
into your area, into the, an area that you have been trained in. Were you trained just because of just training or it was, um, it was God aligning you into what you do in the future? Maybe you, you might have been trained in a certain area and at all you did not have an idea, but you find yourself that you have gone to, uh, to workshops, uh, to trainings. Little did you, know, did you know that God was aligning you into a future that he intends to take you. So it's good to look deep into, your, into those skills that you gained then so that you can become a better person, so that you can serve and serve faithfully. So it's good to treasure your trainings. It's good to treasure your, your, your skills, the skills that you've acquired. Then through that, you're able to, to become. These things will help you now and even in future. I want you to, uh, to treasure them. Make sure that you, you go through these points. Let them be of help to you. And I believe you become a great servant. The last thing that I will mention on service is that you can only become an effective servant if you are connected to Jesus. You can only become a, a, an effective servant if you know who Christ is. People will serve, they will do things, but they will, they will never count into the kingdom because their heart is not connected to their maker. They, it is not connected to who created them. Uh, they're like doing a ceremony, uh, doing something just because people are doing. But when you're connected to Jesus, when you'll be doing it, you'll be uh, on the path or on a line that you receive a great reward. And therefore, one of the things that I will tell us this evening as I close is that you need to be connected to Jesus. You need to be connected to Jesus. And the only way to get connected is through salvation. It is through receiving Christ as your Lord and Savior. You might be doing service to people. Na ile unapata mwishoe ni madharau, matusi, kuambiwa ujafanya kitu. Mwishoe ifanya kitu, alafu nambiwa ni nini umefanya hapa. I know it, it happens. But when, you, when you're connected to Jesus, you're able to do something in grace and you receive a great reward. Reward comes because we are connected. We are walking with Christ. We are not living a sinful life. Then reward will come like rain. I will be praying with you this evening if you, are, if you say that I'm ready to connect with Jesus. I am ready to be born again. I am ready to receive Christ. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I want to be a servant and I want to serve you faithfully. This day I open my heart to you. Receive me. I leave my sin away and I come to you, Christ Jesus, that you may cleanse me and wash me. Take away my sin. Purify me. Save me. And from today, I want to be a new creature. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. From today, I want to serve the Lord, knowing that you are a believer. You are a servant of God. Confess this to your peers. Confess this to your parents. Tell them that you are a changed person. Tell them that I have changed. I am not the one that I used to be before. I am serving God from today henceforth. I will be a great servant in the kingdom of God. And I assure you, you will receive the blessing of a servant. You will receive the blessing of a faithful servant. You will be blessed. And therefore, I say the Lord bless you. Walk in the fear of God. Fear the Lord in the, in the rest of your life. And you see great fruits in Jesus' name. God bless you. May the Lord keep you. 
let's all commit ourselves to serving the Lord, to doing things for God, to shining in the kingdom of God. And I pray that the Lord will give you grace, that you will not serve just as a mere servant, but you will serve in the grace of God. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Share this with your friends. Let them hear what the Lord is doing in your life, what the Lord is doing in GCC. We welcome you in our physical gatherings. Like this Sunday, we will be having a great fellowship. Make sure that you come and do something for God. Commit yourself to serving God. Even, and we say that we're going to start now. Tomorrow in our Thanksgiving service, we will do more. We will be raising the bar in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you. Enjoy your night. See you tomorrow at GCC Kayole in our Thanksgiving service. God bless you. Shalom.